not your keys, not your crypto. This is the rallying cry of those who truly believe in decentralization and want to see banks around the world crumble. That phrase means that if you don't actually use a private Bitcoin or hardware wallet, that you actually don't own your crypto. The question is, are you here for the movement or are you here to get rich? Because that determines how you need to keep your crypto safe. Let's get it. Hello and welcome to BitBoy Crypto, your one-stop shop for all things related to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. If this is your first time here, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. To take the conversation even further, then please make sure to join one of my two Telegram groups, BitSquad for regular crypto chat or BitSquad traders to discuss trading strategies. All right, guys, today we are going to be looking at the best way for you to store your crypto, and it might not be what you think. As I talked about in the beginning, what is your goal in crypto? Are you about trying to bake the unbanked? Are you trying to destroy overarching government reach and power? Or do you literally only care about the money side of it? Because this is an interesting conversation. Many people in crypto say, not your keys, not your crypto. The idea here is that if you keep your money on Coinbase, then you don't really own it. But by this logic, you also don't really own the money in your regular bank, and they would make that. If you just use your bank account or debit card to buy some Bitcoin on Coinbase, then chances are, most likely, you don't care that much about that, or you would have been in crypto a long time ago. So the question we really have to ask is this. As a novice investor, is your money safer if it stays on Coinbase, or is it safer if you buy a hardware wallet and transfer your Bitcoin to it? And I honestly believe that there is merit to a debate here. Now, just saying this may sound like blasphemy to some who believe in decentralization, but my main concern here is helping you to keep your money. Keep in mind, if you mess up one character in a Bitcoin address, you could be sending your funds to some random lucky person. Good for him. Now, if you were to send your crypto to the wrong address, you are never getting it back. However, if your crypto gets hacked off of a reputable exchange like Coinbase or Binance, and it wasn't your fault, then they're probably going to give you your money back. And they have done that before. Binance actually has a specific fund called the Seifu Fund for this very purpose. And I will tell you this, some of the biggest horror stories that I know in crypto stem from people neglecting their own crypto with their own stored solutions. Of course, with less reputable exchanges, we have seen nightmares in that direction, such as Quadriga CX, BitGrail, and Cryptopia. I think this is what it all boils down to. Are you equipped to move your own crypto? If you have to have your kid help you change the input mode on your TV, or you have to have your granddaughter show you how to create an email address, then you may want to consider keeping it safe with a reputable exchange. But the goal of crypto and decentralization is for you to own your own money. So my opinion is this. If you do not feel like you are equipped to use a hardware wallet or desktop or mobile wallet, then you probably shouldn't right now. Continue researching and watching videos until you feel confident enough and start simple by sending a small test transaction. Generally, the best practice when moving crypto is to make a small test transaction before sending the proverbial whole kit and caboodle. All right, so you've now decided that you think you are ready to move from exchange storage to personal storage. The safest way to store your crypto is through what we call cold storage. Most people consider cold storage to be only hardware wallets, but there are actually other types. One thing that cold storage allows users to do is to own their own money. Like if you have cash, you feel the dollar in your hand and you may actually be surprised how much people care about this. For a while, I was doing street interviews and that's actually a very big concern for people. They like cash because they can touch it. A billion dollars in Bitcoin looks the exact same way one billion in Bitcoin looks like. It's just computer code. No matter how much you have, it is still just random characters on a network. But a hardware wallet or a paper wallet 
allows you to be able to touch your crypto and many people like that. One cool thing about a hardware wallet is that it never goes on your computer at all, so there is no way for hackers to install a key logger on them and crack your private key. In fact, this is exactly why it is called cold storage. The private key or seed phrase has never in its history been online, so it's virtually impossible to get hacked, unless you make digital text or image copies of them. But the downside to hardware wallets is that you have to keep up with them. If you lose it or it gets damaged, then you need to understand how to restore them. I'll just tell you how I have my private keys set up. I probably shouldn't reveal this, but hey, if you can find my crypto and get it, then you deserve it. I have a secret hiding place for my hardware devices. They are not even in the same county as where I live. The recovery phrases for those hardware wallets are in a safety deposit bank in a bank in a different county that's not even where I have an account. The words in the recovery phrase are engraved on metal with an engraving pen. If you can crack my safety deposit box to get my keys, track down the hiding place that I use, and get the crypto off of the devices, I honestly salute you. You deserve it. And you did a great job. So yeah, good luck with that. But you see, if my devices were compromised, a hacker could not get into them without the seed phrase. However, as long as I still had the seed phrase, then I could buy a new device and restore the data and get my coins. I actually have the recovery phrases stored in one other place as well for backup. Believe it or not, actually in a totally different state. But in terms of hardware wallets, I would say the top two are obviously Trezor and Ledger. They are the most trusted names in crypto when it comes to hardware wallets. Each has their own merits that make them possibly a good choice for you. But along with those two popular brands, two of the ones I really like are the Koba Wallet and the Cool Wallet. I think both of these are excellent choices as well. Now, the Cool Wallet is actually considered a warm wallet because it requires the use of a physical device and also a web app. Web wallets are called hot wallets, so a Cool Wallet is warm because it requires both. Between those four choices in the wallets, I would say that Ledger is the most trusted, Trezor is the most secure, Kobo Vault is the most durable, and Cool Wallet is probably the easiest one for beginners. Another cold storage solution is a paper wallet. A paper wallet is literally a piece of paper with your private keys printed on it. But a piece of paper is pretty flimsy. Now, if you are going to make a paper wallet, you have to be careful to make sure that your printer does not store the images that it prints or else there may be a digital copy of it on your cloud. This is why I don't use paper wallets myself. I don't even trust my own printer. And creating a paper wallet is never going to be a great solution for a newbie. So if you are looking to make the jump to cold storage as a new person to crypto, you should probably skip the paper wallet. Now, there are plenty of other wallets for you to choose from. As you know, I'm a big fan of both Monarch Wallet and the Crypto.com wallet. Now, Crypto.com is a wallet, but it also has an exchange and earn features. You don't have your private keys though. Monarch has some of the same features as well, but with Monarch, you do actually own your private keys, making it a solid choice. But remember this, the way you choose to store your crypto is a personal decision. There are advantages and disadvantages to each and every type of storage solution. There are people out there who will criticize you for your own personal decision to keep crypto on an exchange, or they will critique your wallet choice. This is pretty dumb. Honestly, I believe that. These same people will tell you that banks and governments want to have tyranny over you and that we should fight them. However, they get upset about the way you want to store your crypto and they want you to feel guilty about it, quite hypocritical. If it's truly your money, then it's none of their business how you choose to do that. I use a myriad of solutions personally, and I do keep some of my crypto on exchanges, specifically the money that I trade with or the crypto that I feel like I may actually consolidate or move around later down the road. And I don't feel guilty about it and would never. It's my money and I will do with it what I want. And always remember guys, don't go around telling people how much crypto you own or exactly how you store it. That's a great way to make yourself a prime target. While hackers can hurt you electronically, there are bad people out there who would possibly physically assault you and torture you to find out where it is, especially in a bull run. The same bad things people do for cash, they also will do for crypto. But now it's your turn. How do you store your crypto? 
what is your favorite crypto wallet? Drop it down below. Am I missing a great one? If so, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe to become a member of the fastest growing community in crypto, the Bit Squad. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. Bitboy out.